Hi everyone and welcome to my very first ever Get Ready With Me on uh, Your Sewing Buddy. So today I'm doing the makeup and hair for my historical Halloween traffic signals um, costume. <laughs> so I've already got my face clean, primed, moisturized, all ready to go. Um, so I'm not going to go over brand names or anything of what I'm doing, just because um, no one is sponsoring this. And some of the products I'm using came in uh, makeup sample boxes. So the brands are not ones I would normally choose or advocate for. Um, but first off, I'm just covering up my eyes, or my under eyes here. Um, I'm not going... Thank you, Random Motorcycle. Um, I'm not going for a full historically accurate look here. Um, I am just trying to replicate the girl in the image that we see for this costume. And if you hear coughing in the background, that is my spouse. Now that I've got some stuff on my under eyes, got a brand new blendy sponge. Makeup that hasn't been touched pretty much since uh, our first shutdown here. And I'm not a professional makeup person, so my techniques don't match with your techniques. I don't care, it's what works for me. Same like when I'm sewing. And if you do learn something from what I do here, then more power to you. So what I'm doing here is just, um, I have my foundation on the back of my hand, just one pump of a liquid foundation. And then I'm dabbing my sponge very lightly into that and kind of dabbing it all over my face to get a good even coating. I know a lot of people will squirt it directly onto their face or, um, use the sponge to or a brush to lay out dabs around their face, but I feel like I get more even coverage this way. Um, but then once I feel like it is all covered, I'll go back through and build up in areas where I see redness or acne scars or other things that I want covered up a little bit more. Uh, and then, of course, because I'm doing a dark red lip on this, I will be going over the edges of my lips just to make sure that I get a good clean line there. And then a little bit of blending down the neck, a little bit more touch-ups around the face. Okay, and then a trick I have learned from some beauty gurus on YouTube, um, I'm going to take a tissue piece, separate the plies, which is sometimes easier said than done. There we go. So I've got one ply and that's going to go around my blender. And then this is actually going to soak up um, any oils on here to help the makeup set better. And also take off any uh, excess product. This is a trick I learned from Wayne Goss, but I do not support Wayne Goss as a person uh, for general reasons. Ta-da! So next step is to powder. Because I do really want this to be locked in for as long as possible. My makeup brush has collected some cat hair too. That's fun. <laughs> and normally I would do this with my BB blender as well. And I'm just doing a very light dusting of powder. Because it turns out when you don't do your makeup for several months in a row, you may in fact forget a few of the steps or how exactly you would normally do it. So uh, please bear with me. And then the next trick is to once again, blend that in a little bit. The trick with this step is to really 
combine the foundation and the powder so that all the oils are locked down and nothing is going anywhere at all, rain or shine. And that's our base. So I don't think she actually has eyebrows in the image, um, so I'm just going to leave my eyebrows as they are. What she does have is a fuck ton of eyeliner. So I've got one of those questionable um, brand liners here. I'm actually not accustomed to using this type of application, so we'll see how it goes. And I am aware of that little dot I got above my line that I'm drawing, uh, but as long as the end product looks good with my eyes open, I don't really care. I am not in a place to be bothered by that. Honestly, I wish this brand wasn't so terrible. I mean, policy-wise. And I'm not doing wings or anything because this is more of a 1930s look, which means just very clean lines, um, perhaps drawn down just a little bit. Once again, normally I just use a pencil eyeliner, but I wanted something that was really going to lock down here, which despite wishing that this was a good brand, it did cause my eyes to burn a bit um, towards the end of the day, but it lasted most of the day. All right, it's decently dark. Next is mascara. I have no idea if I was supposed to do uh, eyelash curling first and then liner or how that works but again this is just what I'm doing I am not a beauty guru and I realize it doesn't look like I'm doing anything at all here because my eyelashes are very pale and against the metal eyelash curler they just don't really show up on camera also I f always feel like my eye sockets are not symmetrical all that aside, with a little bit of cleanup on some smudge, we are good to go. And then this is one of those two-step mascaras. So on the one hand we have a primer, and on the other hand we have fibers that go on your lashes. And don't worry, this is a drugstore brand. It's not one of those MLM uh, makeup brands that have a similar product. This was... I don't even know. I know this mascara is too old to actually be using, but again, I haven't touched my makeup in several months, so most of it is probably ready to be replaced as far as time goes. And also in the photograph, she does like nothing to her lower, uh, her lower lash line, so I'm gonna leave that alone. You may have noticed it's very difficult for me to talk and apply makeup at the same time. Um, that's why I have so much speed up and uh, voiceover in this video. But don't worry, we're almost there. Now, it's not as dramatic as hers because I have kind of a hooded eyelid, but it works. Working down the face. Next is blush. And she's got like big old circle blush, so gonna try to replicate that. I'm a little sad the blush didn't show up as much as I hoped it would on camera. Um, it's a lot darker in real life, but you can still see a little bit of it. Feeling kind of like Pikachu here. And uh, just gotta blend that out some. And then last we just have lips. Luckily, she has a very dark red on, and this is basically my favorite lipstick ever. I have always been insecure about my lipstick application method, um, but I do like using the point of the lipstick to fill in my top points. I'm going to take the other ply from my two ply. And then I'm gonna mess everything up here. 
Luckily, I still have a little bit of concealer left on my concealer brush to clean that up with. Okay, so that's the face. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a little bit of shade in there just because I am a self-conscious person and I have quarantine body. Not to mention pregnancy body, um, but I do have a little bit more chin than I did. There we go. So now for the hair, um, she has a cute little curly bob. I have a lot of long straight hair. So I'm going to try something experimental. I'm actually going to flip my head upside down and then do a pony, put in a hair tie about halfway and then that'll sit on top of my head and then the head will go over that. Maybe that'll work. Maybe I'll be trying something else in another take. We'll see. Okay, so actually this is kind of a fast, easy way to do Edwardian hair, but not what I'm going for today. So let me... Let me try pulling the hair tie further down my hair and see how that works. Once again, very cute look, but now the back's a little bit too long. So I think what I'm actually going to do is the cheaty, like, under roll bob. And I will show you how that turns out. And here's where I thought that I could show you all how to do this. Um, because it doesn't require me turning upside down and changing camera angles and everything. But... It did not work out for me. Um, I pulled the hair tie out almost to the end of my hair and then started wrapping it the wrong direction first before realizing that that was a mistake. Um, tried to wrap it back under the other way and it's just falling apart and the hair doesn't want to stay together or do what I need it to do. So screw that, on to another plan. So what I finally wound up doing is um, loose braids that start about here, fold those up and sort of tuck them up and under, and then use a tuck fun of bobby pins, but this is in no way actually going to hold for as long as I need it to. Um, so we'll see, and I might just wind up putting my hair in a simple bun and calling it a day because hat. Yeah, so it is what it is. I'm gonna go get dressed now, and then Jody is going to help me with doing some reveal shots outside. Uh, and of course, this reveal will have to be dedicated to the glorious and wonderful queen of vintage Halloween, Rachel Maxey. And yeah, can't wait to show you the whole costume put together. So that concludes my historical Halloween adventure. Uh, I hope you enjoyed taking this ride with me. Um, took us a little bit to find an area with no real cars or things I would have to, you know, edit the numbers off of. Uh, <laughs> it's the most time I've spent outside since we went to vote. So that was exciting. And uh, you can see the hair did not hold up. Uh, I'll figure something else out for uh, actual Halloween Halloween because I am filming this a couple of, well, one week ahead of time. So uh, I hope that you all stay safe this Halloween. I hope that you uh, are able to enjoy some aspects of the holiday, even if you aren't able to go out and party with your friends like we would all really love to do. Uh, so yeah, go make beautiful things and I will see you again next week.